Even right now, while I'm preaching, I'm speaking life inside of you, and it's up to you to receive it. He said, look up. And then I looked up. He said, look out. And then he told me to look up. You know, I hadn't done all the deep stuff to make it sound like it really came from you. Surely you can't be giving me a word before I got to my law office from the courthouse. God, it ain't, that ain't spiritual enough. You should have waited and gave it to me on the 31st. Y'all know I'm joking, right? Because, you know, some people, they are so conditioned to receive from God a certain religious way. They don't think I'm too deep because I don't, hmm, hmm, yeah, hmm, hmm, yeah, yeah. But those same people, I'm not going to say that, but I'm just saying, the question is, are you getting results out of the word? I don't care how deep you act. Are you getting results? Because results are the deepest thing you can do. Bishop Lockett used to say this, if it's not practical, it's not spiritual. We want spiritual concepts. We need a certain music to receive from God. We need a certain person to pray for us to receive from God. And God is so dishonored by that. He's like, so if you don't get this person to pray for you, you saying I can't heal you? Because after all, I thought it was me that was using them anyway. Well, let me call such and such. You know, we, we need them to get here. When they show up, God is here now. What? That shows how little your faith is. Because it's connected to a man or a woman and not to God. Huh? To the, to the people that think like that, that's a religious mindset. And this is why, I'm gonna get off of this in a minute, but I'm, I just feel the need to say this. And this is why the Pharisees and the Sadducees struggled with Jesus because believe it or not, your savior was very different. He didn't, he didn't pray like everybody else. He, didn't, he spit on people. Now he did it because healing took place. He wasn't just doing it to do it for an example. But he, 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 the lady, he spit on some mud, and then he healed her. That wasn't too religious. That wasn't too spiritual. He, he then uh, called a lady a dog. He said, whoo, he did that? But she said, yet the dogs eat from the master's table. He said, yeah, you're right, be healed. He walked up in places and, 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 and he would turn over tables. That ain't too spiritual. That ain't too deep. But the thing I like about God is that he will use you in any capacity or way he chooses to use you if you are surrendered. And don't you worry about who might receive you, who might think you're deep. Only thing you need to worry about is, did, is God telling you to do what he told you to do, and he's going to take care of the rest. Huh? See, I may not run up to the front and throw my offering down, but I am giving. And I'm going to get the same result. Are you with me? All right, so let me, let me, let me, let me, let me finish this up now. Uh, because, you know, some of us feel like, oh, I'm so behind in the church etiquette and spirituality and all that stuff, you know, I don't care about any of that. Am I pleasing God? And am I doing what he told me to do? And am I getting results? Are you with me? That's all that matters. Say that's all that matters. All right, so let me finish this up. First Corinthians 12, 20 through 34, 11, 20 through 34, all right. Let me finish this up and let me give you some points and then we'll get ready to take communion. This is my body. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way he took the cup of wine at the supper saying, this cup is the new covenant. Now look at this. This cup is the new covenant, not the new testament because now he has died and rose again so the testator is dead and has left his will 
which now activates the new covenant between God and his people and agreement confirmed with my blood. See, this, this cup represents the confirmation of a blood covenant between you and Jesus Christ. Um, do this in remembrance of me. As often as you drink it, for every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. Did you catch that? You are announcing. See, this is a symbol that I believe. And God was showing me this the other day. He said, the next time somebody challenges you on what you believe, agree with them. I was like, what? Then he reminded me of the scripture. The Bible says, agree with your adversary quickly. And then there's another scripture in Proverbs that says, don't argue with the fool in his folly. And I'm, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, unless you become, when you answer a fool to his folly, you become no different than the fool. So the next time somebody comes up to me and says, well, I don't believe in Jesus. Okay. Uh, okay. You don't have to. I do. In the discussion. We don't need a debate. Because I'm not going to try to change your beliefs. And you show us heaven ain't going to change mine. Huh? You show is heaven ain't gonna change mine. Are you are you with me? I ain't changing. I'm taking this one to the grave. If I'm wrong, I'll figure that part out later. But I didn't I didn't came too far now to change up. I believe in Jesus. Okay? So did you know that the Bible says this and Jesus this and Jesus that? Okay. Wow. We can't keep arguing now, because I just said, okay. Same way in a, a relationship, a marriage, you know, when we get into conversations, heated fellowships with our spouses. Next time, try this. You damn it! Okay. <laughs> See, the Bible says that a soft answer turns away wrath. You want to know how you can beat the enemy? Stop arguing with him. Because then he'll stand there and be arguing by himself. And that's what he's going to look like what the Bible calls a fool. What are you so mad for? You know, I, I mean, if, if, if you don't believe in Jesus and you got the real truth, you ought to be excited and happy. You shouldn't be so mad. You ain't nothing, you ain't believing in that. You ain't. Okay. <laughs> Why are you so angry about it? If you got the real truth and you represent Yah, who's God? Who, who, who is what? The Bible says God is what? Love, right? You ought to be the happiest man on earth. You got the truth. You got the real truth. You ought to be so happy. You ought to be walking around. Your, your feet ought to be dangling every time I see you, man. You got the truth. You ought to be praising Yah. Y'all, thank you for the truth. Thank you that I know the truth. You, he's not going to lead you to do 50 posts on Facebook to create more confusion and friction. Huh? So you want to create debate and argument, but why don't you just spend more time representing the truth that you say that you have? And maybe I might be attracted to it, but the fact of the matter is, it's not truth. Because Jesus said, you'll know the truth, and the truth will set you free. It's not going to make you angrier. It's not going to make you madder. 
It's not going to make you frustrated and flustered and wanting to get in uh, debates and fights and arguments. It's going to want you to walk in freedom and praise the Lord. Are y'all with me? All right, let me, get, let me finish up here. So anyone, verse 27, who eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord, unworthily is guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. So now, when Jesus has died for you and you have accepted him and you believe in the sacrifice, then you are worthy to take communion. Don't be misled by that scripture. In all thy getting, get an understanding. Just said Jesus died for you. If you believe that truth, you become worthy to partake of this Holy Communion. Are y'all with me? All right, as I get ready to close, let me just leave you with two or three major points, and then we'll get ready to take communion. Guys, you guys are interrupting me. I'm asking that you be quiet again, okay? Y'all loud. All right? We get ready to take communion, so it's now to focus in. But let me just give you uh, a few points here. Number one, the blood is the basis of the New Testament and covenant. What? The blood is the basis of it. You see, without the sacrificial death, the sacrificial death on the cross, this whole new, new covenant after Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, had Jesus not died, everything after that would be null and void. You can have the promises after Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John because of the fact that he died for you. All right? Matthew 26 and 28. Matthew 26 and 28. Let me read this scripture for you. All right. Is anybody getting anything out of this? Matthew 26 and 28. Uh, let's see. Yeah, for this is my blood which confirms the covenant between God and his people. It is poured out as a sacrifice to forgive the sins of many. You have forgiveness available because of the blood of Jesus. Number two, Jesus had to shed blood for the atonement of our sins to be allowed before God. You see, without the atoning sacrifice of Christ then you cannot go before the Heavenly Father. You cannot enter into the, into the heavenly gates. It's the sacrifice of Jesus. Are y'all with me? It's the sacrifice. It's because of what Jesus did. Hebrews, let me read this. Hebrews 9 and 22. The Bible says this. Um... Hebrews 9, 22. In fact, according to the law of Moses, nearly everything was purified with blood. For without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. The blood wipes your sins away and wipes your slate clean. Bible tells us that if anyone be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away and all things have become new. It's not our good works, but it's the work of the cross. And when we learn how to put our dependence on the work of the cross instead of our own works, then we can actually receive the love that God has for us. This is not something that you earn. This is not something that you are good enough to get. It's something that's given to you as a gift. 
Bible tells us, for God so loved the world that he gifted or he gave his only begotten son. That was a gift. He gave it. It didn't say you earned it. He just gave it to you. And whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. 2 Corinthians 5th chapter, 21st verse, it reads this. For God made Christ who never sinned to be the offering for our sin so that we could be made right with God through Christ. See, let me read that again. That's powerful right there. For God made Christ who never sinned to be the offering, New Living Translation, 2 like Corinthians 5th chapter here, 21st verse, made Christ to be the offering for our sin. So that we could be made right with God through Christ. You get right with God, not by becoming a good person, not by having good behavior, but you get right with God. Righteousness is simply accepting your right standing with God because of who and what Jesus did for you. Are you with me? When, when, when people say you, you are self-righteous, what that really means is you are thinking that your rightness without Christ, even though it may be perfection, is still not acceptable to God. Huh? What makes you righteous is Christ. Not you, but Christ. He imputes his right standing with God into your life. And then you are made, not become, but you are made righteous. This is amazing when you really get the revelation of it, that God made me righteous. I didn't do this. I didn't deserve this. I accepted him and he made me righteous. He made me righteous. Huh? We, 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 we get it. We, we try to be too deep with it. Can you go ahead and pass out these cups, brother? We try to be too deep with it and make it more about us than about him. 